This is Big Man Tyrone, and you're about to watch the MTG Cabal cast with your hosts, Wode, Thirsty, and Reptar. Sub to us on all your podcast networks at MTG Cabal Cast and YouTube. Hey guys, welcome to a special edition of MTG Cabal Cast. Uh, I am Halt, I am Reptar, here uh, with a special guest uh, who reached out to us a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Coach is his name on uh, YouTube, and I believe you can search for him on, on Twitter. It'll bring you back to the Car Bazaar CC. And this is for something a little unique. It's uh, non-financial related, so this is pretty much a, a pretty cool little bit of supplemental content we have. And uh, what Coach did was actually narrate The Thran, a, a book from probably the first few years of Magic Somewhere, I think in the first uh, four years. And... Uh, he did it start to finish, uh, all the voices. Uh, did you do all the production yourself? Uh, I, this is a one-man show. This okay. Is one, this was totally solo. Awesome. So uh, all the voices, all, all the effects on the voices, uh, everything done. Uh, I, I listened through it over the course of this week, and I would highly recommend it. Uh, the early years of Magic probably has some of the most interesting lore to the game. And the Thran is basically all about the rise of Yagamoth, who is mm -hmm. huge in the multiverse and uh, offers up a little bit of information about one of the earliest planeswalkers that we have still yet to meet. Uh, is it Dyson is her name, I think. Dyfed. Dyfed, I'm sorry about that. It's uh, all good. And uh, it just paints this really vivid picture. Uh, the book does, I'm sure reading it's probably not nearly as vivid. It seems kind of dry, but to hear it narrated, it, it's going to, to just be a, an excellent piece of, of work. And the interesting thing is that this is not done by Watsi. They did not contact mm -hmm. you for this. So you have no, well, Yeah, I, I was the, it was the opposite. I, I tried contacting them to see if it was even possible to do this. And basically it was covered under the fan content policy according to them and according to the IP lawyer that I was in contact with. Oh, okay. So th that was actually going to be a, like, actually my first question was uh, how this really came about. Yeah, so like I was looking up basically when I do ideas, when I try to do YouTube content, I'm trying to think of stuff that nobody does or nobody has done very often. Mm -hmm. And that's where I usually start. And one of the things I was looking into was audiobooks because I would think, okay, they got to be relatively simple. But of course, I, of course, I was wrong on that apparently <laughs> because when I was looking at the audio, some of the audiobooks that were already released, um, none of them were complete so a lot of people did oh. like the brothers war and but got to like maybe five chapters maybe about 20 to 25 percent of the way done mm -hmm. and nobody finished it and so my idea was to actually do one that was like complete get one that's finished and start from the very beginning so that way you know if i do have motivation to keep going on that yeah. there will be like some sort of you know the stories in chronological order or yeah, and uh, as far as like the timeline goes, yeah, chronological order. Okay. So, but was, that was the first one I started with. So I contacted Watsi, you know, two different occasions. One time they said, yeah, it's covered on a fan content policy. Another one was saying you need to contact a lawyer because we're not, you know, I, I guess it was another group of people, and that's when I contacted the IP lawyer and pretty much gave me the clear. Okay, and so that's why you had to brand this as unofficial. Yes. And uh, as, does part of that mean that you basically have to put it up uh, for fair use, kind of uh, under what is it, like the GNU license style for software thing? So it's yeah. on YouTube unmonetized, or? Well, you, I can monetize it. I just can't like uh, as far I can monetize it and I can promote like the Patreon that I have, and you know it has to be available for free. So it's not like you can oh this is a patron only access audiobook okay. because that goes against the terms of service that Watsi has in the books. Okay. Uh, and is this the, the first piece of, uh, like, game lore you've done, not just for Magic, but for other games that are out there? Uh, for audiobooks, yes. Okay. Uh, what else have you done besides Magic? Oh, oh, just besides Magic? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I've done, like, in my early years, I've done Pokemon, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, with the Card Anthology series to kind of, like, conglomerate that series because that you know that's what i started off with okay. when i got to when i did magic was the card anthology series going over the each set each of the sets histories and so that's on a playlist of like 52 episodes 
and I tried that, and then I've done also a couple of uh, maybe not not Dungeons and Dragons, but like three D printed uh, videos of where I print miniatures of like stuff on Hero Forge. Um, I did stuff with like the Guard Unit, and that was a Hero Forge sponsored like video. They gave me like codes for free, and basically oh, wow. I would uh, like get promotionals and get the digital prints for free and make it on my own stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's what I would do. So I think I'm going to go also a little bit more into that since I bought like a, a, a bigger printer now. Mm-hmm. So I could print like these stupidly, ridiculously large items now. That's cool. But past that, you know, I just, I mostly focus on magic. So the car anthology series, um, I also have done the timeline video, which is actually my most successful video right now. And is the timeline for the multiverse? Yes. Okay. It, it is currently, I, did, uh, I think I published it last summer and right now it should be i think it's at like 137,000 views because mm-hmm. it's another project that nobody attempted to do and so I, that's when i stepped in and kind of like okay this is gonna be my project so that was like a six-week ordeal so okay. the card anthology the timeline i've also done the top 100 best performing cards mm-hmm. that was another summertime project that i did after the timeline so it was yeah some pretty big projects and then the audiobook so i'm kind of like just hitting stuff that nobody's really done. Yeah, and uh, that's pretty interesting. Like, uh, it seems like Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon are generally tied together. Somebody starts in one and generally m- moves to another. You don't really see uh, a lot of migrancy from a game like Munchkin, for instance, into yeah. uh, into these card games. So it's neat to see that content creation kind of flows similarly. Uh, you know, we joked a little bit about production before we started the cast, and Comparatively speaking, uh, this was one of the more difficult productions mm-hmm. that you've done. Oh yeah, but like this was instead of like you know prior to this, it was the timeline, and that was like a six week project. And this audiobook easily doubled that, as far as like uh, times and weeks, and you know spent on you know this sort of ordeal with YouTube. So it's easily trumps the mtg timeline video like any day of the week okay and so it was the as a whole production was more difficult or was it more along the lines of like uh, the audio took a lot longer to produce because you had to keep going back and editing or trying to get it all up on youtube at uh at a similar rate so it's just all there at once instead of one the first of 30 then the second of 30 hit um it was more of like the editing, what, the editing was the hardest part because, like, a bit, basically like every minute of audiobook took anywhere from like ten to fifteen minutes of like editing those, you know, that sound. Mm-hmm. And so when you multiply that by fifteen minutes per video, and then on top of that, there's thirty four of them. I mean, that's a lot of time that you're devoting to editing. And that, yeah, and that was just editing. Okay. The one, the one major pro of this was that I didn't have to write a script because yeah. you just read. And so that was, you know, a good portion of my time. With the time my video was making a script, and that was like a sixty-five page, basically video essay. And so you t- you take one out of the way, but then you get to the editing, and it like makes up for it. Yeah, tremendously. So and- it's just it, it's crazy how how much time it takes to getting the so- getting the audio right. How hard was it to do all the voices while you were doing this? Now, and I don't mean from an editing standpoint. I mean, you know, you're reading, you know, your part for the first time, the third time, whatever it is, and you have multiple voices. You have uh, Yogmoth talking to um, Glaceon or to uh, Rebecca. You know, those kind of back and forth. Did you have to start and stop a lot? Um. Well, like I just kind of, I kind of just did it on the go, and with Yogmoth, you know, I wanted. You know, to set the darker tone, I wanted like to have like a slightly deeper voice. Mm-hmm. Um, Glaceon, who I thought, you know, going into thought would have more uh, lines of dialogue, so I just used my own voice with a little bit of pep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rebecca, I used a higher higher pitch voice, and then I would actually go into the software for Yamoth and Rebecca, and you know, increase the pitch a little bit more for Rebecca and decrease it for Yamoth a little bit. Uh, for him and then there was like die fed which i used a different accent for there was also yes. like the individual phyrexian soldiers and generals and commanders and engineers and 
all those people. And I kind of just did those with like similar voices or maybe I changed up the accents a little bit. Mm-hmm. That actually wasn't hard. Um, I, I wrote a lot of stuff down. I wrote numbers for what pitch values they should have. Um, and then like gigs, I made it not like an accent, but I made his voice more like raspy. Yeah. More like um, lots of spikes as far as like the sentence structure or lots of like quick pauses or it, it, it was just almost like a very i wanted to make, make it more like a if like a character was like a reptile that's what i was gonna say it sounded kind of like snaky like he did a lot yeah, of trails that's, that's, on his yeah that's what i was trying to shoot for and just to make him just to make them distinguishable yeah so with the voices i i assigned different you know i actually had to write, write this down and you know, just as a reminder to myself. And a couple of times I had to like go back and listen to some of the stuff I did and just kind of remember, okay, how did I do this? Mm. But the voices actually was not the toughest part. Really? It seemed yeah, like it, it was, been. um, it's just, it was who's talking to who that was probably the bigger issue. Okay. So, but the voices was actually not that bad. Okay. The, um, there's a, a lot of voice actors, uh, through like pr- the cartoon industry kind of reference back to each other and they talk about like some of the amazing things they've seen and I think uh, one of the biggest problems people have noted is switching voices especially when it's one person performing both roles mm-hmm. and uh, one of the the best things that anybody ever saw was uh, behind the scenes for Rocco's Modern Life the same person did the voice for Ed and Bev Big Head so mm-hmm. they would do the conversation unless they had to like interject and interrupt over another sentence in one go so it'd be the same person changing voices and i wasn't sure if that was something that uh you had thought about like just trying to make it all like flow state and just you know maybe highlight in the reading okay this part's going to be yagmoth a highlight in this color so i know what i need to do with my voice before i modulate digitally when he's talking to rebecca i need to do this so i highlight in this color and i'll pep it up here or if it was just kind of like uh broken off in chunks well the big thing with like with the voice actors who do the cartoons and stuff is that they kind of have to sometimes they have to match it with the the picture that's going on because usually I think they do the they do lots of the art before they even go in and do the voice acting and it kind of match with them. Yep. So and with the audiobook there's nothing to match it. So you just kind of it, it was easier for me cuz you just you could just go in and talk. You just go in and converse because you're you it's there's a blank there's not a blank not a blank screen but there, there's like a still picture that's up so you don't have to worry about trying to match like the mouth with the voice with the the words and such it's just you go mm-hmm. that's it so there that is comparing those two i mean my my job was a lot easier compared to like people who did like the guy who did like Rocco's modern life yeah no it, it makes sense and i assume this is just probably one of the more interesting and difficult things to do and to really like get a hold of and get used to especially yeah. if like if you hadn't broken everything out ahead of time and say like all right in this chapter i'm going to break it down into these sub scenes so to speak if you just want it to go all at once okay i, I don't know your process for this so i mean well I'm- uh for the chapters i mean there there was a lot of chapters that were broken up and that had different scenes and so what i ended up doing is that if there was a scene like a scene change, I would actually wait about four to five seconds to kind of give the reader, okay, like nothing's happening and then start again to where, okay, it's like something else. It's, it's a new, it's a new setting. It's a new background. So mine was more of like having a a distinct, you know, a distinguishable amount of time in between Mm -hmm. the setting. So, I mean, that wasn't, that wasn't bad. So, I mean, it was, I'm just trying to find things that will click to mm-hmm. where the reader doesn't get confused. Got it. I understand. And uh, did you choose the Thran just because it hadn't been done yet, even started and stopped prematurely, or because you this is a storyline you enjoy? Well, it's like the reason why I picked the Thran was it because it was one of the the first chronological book, like uh, books. So my process is. To, you know, if I do more of these, to try to do them in order. Mm-hmm. So if like I started with the Thran, and then I go on to the, to the Brothers War, I want to continue on at least through the artifact cycle, and then go on from there and just kind of pick and choose where I want to go. But my or, my thinking process, just like the card anthology, you know, start from Alpha and Beta, and you know, go to all the way to like 
something like Dissension or like Ravnica. Okay. So it was, you know, it's just, that's my process. I, I want to do it in chronological order. That's just the way I do things. Okay, got it. So this wasn't just like necessarily an experiment to see how well it takes and then do more from there. You wanted to give yourself literally foundation at ground zero. Take the first book and then uh, move from there. Yes. Uh, when you when you finish this and you are done with, uh, you know, production, stem to stern, and the video is uploaded, did you think like, all right, we're ready to go. Let's start thinking at about the Brothers War and what comes after that? Or are you, you now in like, just don't want to think about it. It took so long to do. You know you yeah, want right. to get back to it, but... Yeah, like right now, I just want to kind of take a break from like the audiobook stuff. I'm doing, uh, I'm kind of figuring out some other projects I'm working on. Um, I want to do like a Dominaria-based video that I want to try to make as long as my, my MTG timeline video. Okay. And so hopefully that'll be like just as big of a success. Um, but the audiobooks, I think I want to try, if it, this gets more traction, I want to try to make it to where it's like a, a summer project. Okay. And because in the summertime, I'll have more, a lot more time since I'm a teacher and a coach. And, you know, there could be days where I could just, I could do the whole recording of the audiobook, just get that stuff out of the way. And then maybe next week, just like edit or mm -hmm. redo stuff or like touch it up. You know, that'll give me significant amounts of time to do that because you know from like nine to five my fiance is working so i don't have to worry really about anything else i could really just start recording don't have to write a script yep. and then probably the plan would be to release you know the bits of the audiobook probably during the time of football season to where i'm still producing content i'm still releasing it mm -hmm. but this is stuff that was done in the summer and now i'm just going to do a delayed you know releasing of it during football season where i probably won't have nearly as much time as like i do now got it and it's like uh when you're doing that release and then during the rest of the school year is that a point in time where you can do pre-production for uh, the next video series be it an audio book or something else so if we can expect let's say kind of this cyclical content creation so, you know, people sign up for, uh, you know, they, they hit YouTube, they come to your channel, they sub, and then they can start seeing, like, new content in the football season, and then maybe again towards uh, end of year, they know you're moving into pre-pro for the next project, so to keep their eyes out uh, over the summer and into fo the next fall. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I'm, I'm still trying to get it organized properly to what I want. So if I keep doing the audiobooks, I think the audiobooks will be a summertime deal, Um if I do like major projects like the timeline video or like a, you know, a video like the top 100, I want to kind of do that like right before the summer. Mm -hmm. And then like, I want to try to get the card anthology in some of the top 100 or the top 25 or the top 20, uh, videos that I've done before and kind of just figure out, like kind of just do it everywhere else. But I really don't have a super organized structure just yet. I'm still trying to figure that one out, but I think going from here, you know, I think that it would be a great idea to record an audiobook and then release the audiobook where I have the least amount of time. Yep. So all I do is, you know, market it, share it, publish it, and then when football season's over, then it's like do the normal stuff again. So it's kinda like, you know, being a teacher and a coach, there are time constraints, but yeah, you know, I've been able to figure out ways around it. So I think this would be a lot easier and also would be a lot stressful as far as like the scheduling and trying to do like, Oh, football practice is over. Now I got to go do this. Yeah. And that's just, that's just, Ooh, it's rough sometimes. Oh, I can imagine like just thinking back on, uh, how it, like my fall was probably the busiest because I had, uh, like one and a half fall sports getting mm -hmm. ready. Cause I, 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 I was, a, I did started winter track basically halfway through fall. Yeah. Getting, uh, you know, tuned back up and, and lifting into like, it was falls just super busy. Oh yeah, being absolutely. In the school districts. Uh, for people who do want to follow along on YouTube and Twitter, what is your normal content? My normal content is the card anthology series. So okay. that was, that is probably my most popular, um, as a series. And, you know, I, I want to get back onto it because I've done 52 episodes and that's like a significant amount. That's like almost half of the 
expansions that have, or uh, half of these sets that have been released by Watsy. Yep. So I know the more I do this, I'm going to close in to where I'll probably start running out and, and have to give it a break at some point. Mm -hmm. But I think I want to come into the card anthology series again, maybe do like either anywhere from like two to four episodes and then kind of like step back from it and do something else. Maybe let the Dominaria go. Step back, do the audiobook. Step back, do something else. Got it. And so that way, the sets, there will be more sets coming out. Mm -hmm. And maybe I could start closing in on them a little bit, but not too much to where I run out of card anthology ideas until like I have to wait like two years or so. Got it. No, makes so, sense. I mean, it's, it, yeah, it's just, it, it's, it's a little bit of a struggle, but it's, it's not bad. It's more of a, more of an organizational, you know, it's more of an trying to figure out what to do and mm -hmm. when to do it. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. It, between, you know, your personal life and everything else that goes on with the game, et cetera, you got to figure out where your time can best be spent, you know, and do that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, I, I guess on the way out before we, uh, we close out, so, have you read through all of the magic lore from uh, the Thran up through, I guess, wherever they stopped? I thought it was uh, Kamigawa, but I guess it goes past that into Rav and Future Sight? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. Like, I, I remember going on a Gamepedia and kind of looking through some of the summaries um, with... I've always... I've also, like, you know, when I first started having YouTube as my main source of you know, watch. Mm -hmm. um, Wedge was one of the first people I started looking into. It was the the lore that I was looking into, like his summarizations. Um, and then, really, I mean, I'm not too too familiar. Like, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm like a a true Vorthos because, like, a true Vorthos would like know everything, and oh, I'm yeah, just like, yeah. and I'm just like, uh, I'm getting there, but I'm not like, like I would say an expert. I, I'm not some self proclaimed claimed expert like some people say that i am um but <laughs> i guess i know it goes mess here with that <laughs> <laughs> um but i know it goes the thran the artifact cycle and then i think you start getting into the weatherlight saga yes and then you go to like wrath and storm and then like the apocalypse storyline which is still technically and, part of the weatherlight storyline i believe yeah and then it goes into like the mirari Yep. And then it goes into oh well, the Mirari and the Corona also. They fall they fall in that same scheme. And then from there it goes to Mirrodin. Yep, that's the first time we actually know that we planeswalk in the mm -hmm. card game. Yep. And then from Mirrodin and it's like I keep I can, forgetting where it is. I can name like the Mir planes after that. It's uh, Mirrodin into Kamigawa, into Ravnica, into uh Future Sight Block. Yeah. Into uh, Alara, and then we're close enough. Zendikar, and then everybody should know from there out, basically. Yeah, then you start getting into, like, you're truly out of Dominaria. Yeah. Long gone from Shiv and Keld. Yep. So, uh, uh, where can people find you? Oh, we people can find it. <laughs> Obviously, YouTube, but uh, they can find me at the Car Bazaar YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, the way it's bizarre spelled is B A Z A A R, like a, like a shop. Yes. Um, and then they can find me. And follow me on Twitter mm -hmm. by going to coach at the Car Bazaar CC. They can, people can message me, and I usually get back to them like fairly quickly. They could basically ask me anything if they want to. Yeah, and, you were super responsive when we were trying to figure this out, and uh, I had my pitfall last weekend before we were trying to do this. I got snowed in in Boston, so. Yeah, it's all good. Um, but yeah, that's where people can usually find me. Um, those are my two. Those are the two main places I get people out. So if people comment on my channel, mm -hmm. I get back to them like fairly fast. Now, if it's the response they want, that's the yeah. that's a different, that's a different story because someone, oh, not too long ago, probably about an hour ago, commented on the timeline video, and it was along oh, the line. And this is one of the more disliked comments. I don't get very I don't get very often, but it was like like five minutes. I couldn't understand what you were saying like jesus slow down and then i put i put some stupid ass reply it was it was funny <laughs> as hell. i put i put something like along the lines of and jesus said in mark four fifteen that basically i said there's a slow down button oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so 
but I was just make I was just I was just being like a complete smart ass at that point. It was just uh, that's awesome. Uh, I could I could. There's some days where I just you know I want to like just like be nice to people but there and there's some days where i just i'm just a complete smart ass oh yeah oh yeah here, here we go couldn't get through five minutes of this talk clearly and steadily jesus and then put jesus proclaimed in mark four fifteen, and thus the video was in the youtubes behold view behold viewer motion pictures for the lord of media provided that a feature that slows down watch content to 0. 0.75 or 0. 0.5 if thy <laughs> follower wishes so so <laughs> smart ass around my end uh that's for the most part that's how our twitter account is handled because thirsty usually takes care of it i was handling this which is a markedly different conversation than he probably would have had (laughs) uh you did mention a patreon earlier uh yes uh so people can go to i'm trying to remember the exact link but it's if they look up the car bazaar there should be a pay uh patreon website um, I don't remember the exact link. I, I think it's the Car Bazaar YT. Yes, that is after, after Patreon. Yep, I just found it. Hopefully, I can get this over. Boop. Yeah, Innistrad Card Anthology is the uh, the marquee mm-hmm. video right now. Yep. And that was an Innistrad I did a while back, and that wasn't even ordered. The only reason I did Innistrad was because Nisa Hone Magic was doing his uh, Halloween special. And he wanted to line them up with the card anthology stuff, which means I had to skip over like, like 15, 15 or twenty like expansions oh, from where yeah. I was at that okay. point. And so I did like a Halloween special episode. So Industride's like, just like randomly there. So it's not in order at all. So I'm gonna have to when I eventually get it to the Industride block, I'm gonna have to fix that order wise. Mm. But yeah, it was it was only because of Nisa. So <laughs> I mean, it was which is fine. Innistrad was more of my, you know, it's a more watched video. Mirrodin, yeah. John from They Said We Said, the guy I basically started with from the beginning, um, his Mirrodin episode, the one he voiced for like the fifth time, because he, he likes doing the card anthology stuff. His is at like 12,000 views Jeez. for Mirrodin. And it's, yeah, he, he really explains it very well. That's awesome. So yeah, tw- like his is like twelve thousand, and then like the rest of them are like probably under ten thousand, with the exception of the first video, Arabian Nights, Antiquities, and then Mirrored In, and it's after that, you, you know, those are those are the those four are like the big poppers, and then like uh, there's other people that have done like Simon did the I want to say he did I know Simon did one episode right after John's I think it was Tempest okay so Simon did from Aetherhub to Tempest. Um, Tasty Snackies did fifth edition, and he did the, you know, he did unglued. Oh, um, Rogue deck, Rogue deck builder did fifth dawn, and then there was a uh, Vera Vera Dark did Ravnica, and then there's other people that have done like other videos. So like, half of the videos are like guest speakers. That's awesome. So and just another way to get people involved. And yeah. So I think when I'm coming back into card anthology, I think I'm going to get. Um, somebody else to do the audio for the next episode and I'll just do the picture so it'll be it'll be uh, I think it's gonna be jank MTG okay um, or king of jank it's gonna be him yeah. uh, I think he wanted to do an episode and so I just need to write the script and let him get some audio work in and uh, then I'll import it and go from there that's awesome it's great to see like there's so many different communities for magic than just playing the game mm-hmm. and finance. Like the the community behind like the lore and just card art and stuff like that is all in- incredible and huge. And I thank you for coming on the show and reaching out. Like I had a blast. Thanks for having me on. Though. This this is like <laughs> I like doing these interviews because it's, it's just like sometimes I don't know what to expect, and it's just I guess it's like that little uh, just what people are going to ask that makes it a little bit more exciting. Yep. Yeah. Just completely in the dark. That's pretty cool. Awesome. Well, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on. And I'm like, glad, glad I could do this. And thanks for helping me like promote my audiobook and for just uh, the work that I've been doing. Yeah, it, it was great. Uh, I'm, you know, we were talking before the cast. I sent this to a friend as an example of just a start to finish, a great production, great narration. It, it's enthralling and, and it keeps you wanting to listen. I, I 
streamed it all yesterday, I think, or the three quarters of it yesterday, Dang. just while I was kicking around. Like, it That's was, crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd say that, but I don't know. You just painted an excellent picture of uh, uh, reading through the book, the voices, the production, everything behind it, and then it was like just grabbed me. And I hope everybody who listens to this goes and listens all the way through. It is uh, incredibly worthwhile, even if you've read the book. Go back and listen to this. It is insanely good. Well, thanks. Thank you for the compliment. I mean, I really appreciate that. I was that's, you know, I don't I don't hear stuff like that a lot. So it's very it, I appreciate it very greatly. Oh, anytime, anytime. All right, guys. Uh, this was the end of our first supplemental episode, and uh, we should be doing more of these. I think uh, Rogue Deck Builder reached out to us. I might have been uh, for. And then th- something he did, it was either an anthology or something similar. So we might have another one of these coming up soon. Uh, again, Sweet. Uh, thanks for Coach for coming on, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you.